you so much. <laughs> we'll give you a Thank group you, hug. Thank you. That was so sweet. Thank you. Good luck. Is this on? So hello, hello everybody. <laughs> hello everyone. Hi, welcome to our presentation on responsive layouts. My name is Thomas. My name is Ekaterina. Oops. <laughs> and you did it again. So that will happen a lot, I think. So you can reach out for, to contact me if you'd like at Twitter or my Gmail or at LinkedIn. I speak at conferences fairly often. And I do also a bit of training. Oops, excuse me. I'm probably most well known for about three years leading the team on AngularJS material. And at the time that AngularJS material came out, we had about 3,400 forks, almost 16,000 uh, stars, and a whole bunch of watches. And of course, a huge shout out to Brad and Naomi and Google for enabling this project. I'm also a trainer at ThoughtRAM. We travel around the world giving training classes for Angular Material and, and for Angular. And we have a ton of blogs. This is in red. Uri would probably yell at me saying no one can read the red. And there we go. Yeah, hi, and uh, my name is Katerina. I currently work as a front-end developer at a company called Accenture in Accenture Technology in Oslo, Norway. I also speak at the conferences sometimes. Here are some logos of the conferences where I have been presenting. I talked about Flex Layout and uh, about Google Action. So pixel perfection and natural language interfaces, there are two topics that interest me. But now we're going to talk about Flex Layout. And you have, if you have some questions, so just reach me at my Twitter, Chirpik, or that's my email. That's a great Twitter name, by the way. <laughs> So this one. Yeah, and it's very important that you pay attention today to what we will be talking about, uh, because you have a chance to win a hoodie. We are going to play today. Uh, you have probably to have your mobile phone or your uh, computer with a browser connected to the internet, uh, or you can download a uh, Kahoot application where you can play that quiz. These are hard to find. We don't give them out very often, so we're going to give up. We have two quizzes. Each, the winner of each will get one. Do you mean that I will not get? Oh. <laughs> yes, and I have to give you, get, find one for you also. It's so fine. Should, would you like to draw, or shall I introduce you? You can this start. It's, yeah. So originally, Flex Layout came to being from AngularJS Material. AngularJS Material was a UI component framework that supported not only um, Angular native UI components, but it also supported these ideas of theming and uh, fle using Flexbox CSS. And it was a very good generation one implementation, I think. It was reasonable, but it had some problems. And before we start talking about what those problems are and um, how we solve that with the generational two, we should probably step back. Yes, and uh, discuss why uh, we are using that and which problems we are going to solve. So where we start as web developers, where we are building some layouts. So what is layout? Is uh, how the elements are positioned on the web page or in a web application. So how do we approach this problem? We have to position elements at our pages. We have to adjust their positions and probably size. Uh, and how do we think about those problems? Uh, we have containers, and we have their children elements that have, uh, have to be positioned relative to each other, and children have to be positioned relatively to the parent container and sibling elements. Oh, I did it too, you by did. the way. And this is something that we all have had to address in our own applications, and we typically use CSS to do this, right? Almost entirely. You're going to find that we're still using CSS to address this, but we're going to do it in what I think is a remarkably new way. Yeah. So let's consider that we are about to build some typical sample layout. Uh, it's nothing new. You have seen those pages with a header and some content block and a footer bar. We are not focusing on what is exactly inside the logo or a banner or whatever. But uh, how are we supposed, as a developer, to uh, how are we going to build that? So we have uh, different layout techniques. Of course, we have this uh, table technique. I hate uh, the table. 
Oh, you don't like it. I do not like the table. I remember some tables like maybe 15 years ago when I was in school mm. and in my programming class we were taught how to lay out mm. the elements, but it was quite some years ago. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have tables, then we of course can use different CSS properties as float, positions, uh, float and clears and position uh, elements relatively or absolutely. It's not easy and it's pro probably not the most readable code either. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we have CSS Grid, which is awesome. It's very nice, very nice. It's, it's very not available for most browsers yet. It's maybe in the evergreens, but... Yeah, uh, so it's a thing to come, mm -hmm. but probably now it's a bit early to run it mm -hmm. uh, all the way in production. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Flexbox CSS, which has awesome support for 99% of the browsers, 99.7 mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is really fantastic to use. and. That was uh, my feelings about when I realized how Flexbox, how powerful <laughs> Flexbox is and how easy it's, for example, to accomplish vertical centering of the elements and uh, otherwise uh, align and layout elements with Flexbox. You look so stern in this picture. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a night where I haven't slept that good. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, why do we use Flexbox CSS? This is uh, the picture from CSS Tricks, mm -hmm. I think, which is a fantastic resource if you want to learn about Flexbox. Uh, so, we, when we think about Flexbox, we think about the flow of elements. And uh, the main concept here is that we have the uh, container uh, where we see children, uh, child elements which are aligned across to access. Mm -hmm. So it's the boxed model which is optimized for user interfaces. So uh, we have two concepts of two axes, the main axis, which in this case is a horizontal one, where elements are aligned from left to right. Uh, and then we have a cross axis, this vertical one, uh, which elements have the, their relation to. Right, so the good news is don't be scared by trying to memorize these particular terms. That's part of Flexbox CSS, and that's the part that makes it horrible to use. So the, our API actually will sort of take away the need to know how these are labeled and how this works. And maybe you want to so we, this slide. Right. So when we talk about Flexbox CSS, we really have, how do we conceptualize it? Is it, how is it related to a grid? Is it a grid? So if we think of grids, I like to think of cells cells spanning rows and, co and uh, columns. And you might think of that as analogous to a table. So we could almost say that grids are 2D layouts, right? Rows and cells and rows and columns. Flexbox, to use it in the best way possible, you should think of it as a flow. It's a one-dimensional flow. It's either flowing horizontal or it's flowing vertical. And if you start with that concept, then Flexbox becomes so much easier to understand and to use. Yeah, as uh, Carmen mentioned, you were a very good teacher, so <laughs> <laughs> so I what I know about Flexbox, I learned from you. Thank you for that. Uh, so uh, how do we think about Flexbox? I love to think about this um, in terms of flow, as mm -hmm. you uh, totally correct say. Uh, and then we think about child, children, size. So flow can be horizontal or vertical, and size can be whatever you want, either fixed or some percentage or ratios. Uh, so containers define the direction of the flow, and children define not just size, but as well offset and order, how in which elements appear. And what is very powerful and what actually enables the layout uh, usage of Flexbox is that those containers can be nested. So uh, here, uh, I like to think about, <laughs> I, I love this slide, it's uh, Russian matryoshka dolls, and you know I'm from Russia initially. Uh, so uh, a flex container can contain multiple flex containers which can uh, have their own flex directions, which uh, enables almost, uh, we can do almost everything with Flexbox. So when this is said, flex, Flexbox <coughs> Flexbox layout, they flow. So how do we accomplish uh, this layout with this uh, way of thinking in mind? Mm -hmm. We still have this header, which we know that is somewhere at the top. Then we have the content area, somewhere centered, and the footer bar, right? So we have to think 
from outside to inside. So we try to abstract away the complications of what we have inside those containers. And we see that the first axis, the first flow, is from top to bottom. So we just say, OK, let it be a column layout uh, where the element flow vertically. Then we go inside the first element and try to realize what is happening inside it. So here, probably the horizontal flow uh, works best of all, where we say that the first two elements, they are positioned uh, horizontally, and then wrapped where the third element doesn't have enough space to it, right? right. If I'm not wrong, we also could use the column layout here, right? You could. We tend to recommend that you avoid column layout, because often column layout, you need to know the height for the, then the horizontal layout, um, dimensions to be calculated properly. Mm. So whenever possible, you should try to think about horizontal layouts and then only fall back to verticals when you have to. If you take that approach, you won't have to worry so much about hacks and workarounds. Yeah. So here we use the same approach. Here we see the three sections, which are flowed horizontally from left to right. Uh, and then we dive inside the middle section where we use the same approach. We just uh, wrap elements where they don't get enough space. And again, we're working outside to in. Yeah. So basically, here is this uh, way of thinking decomposed uh, with this outside in way of thinking. So it was quite easy, and we didn't uh, have to use any tables or grids mm -hmm. or whatsoever. Then the other important concept which we must use when we work with Flexbox is, of course, element sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we tell Flexbox where everything should be rendered at a page. So, so we could use app specific element sizes, or we could use relative. Mm. So here uh, it is, we see percentages or ratios. So we tell the first element with our logo be to take the 33% of the header. Uh, whereas the second element takes 66, which gives us uh, together 99, mm, or almost 100. I should have fixed that, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, when the third element is set to be 100%, it obviously doesn't fit in the, that remaining 1%. Mm -hmm. So it gets wrapped to the next line. And the similar uh, things we can accomplish here. So those sections on the left and right side, they, they take 25% of the parent element. Uh, here, and then when we dive inside here, it's actually like an, a mistake in our uh, picture because these uh, those two sections they're like 25 um, relatively to the whole page. But what we have to think either conceptually that those are 50% each of this parent block, right? That's correct. Right. This this <clears throat> this diagram is misleading because mm. it shows you the percentages relative to this container. But these have their own flow layout, and these should actually be 50. Yes, yes that's true. And th this one is just 100, and mm, it's not uh, mm -hmm. rocket science to mm -hmm. lay out exactly that. Oh, let me step over here. So, uh, retrospectively, which layout techniques we could have? We have tables, uh, which we, in theory, could use. Then we have Flexbox CSS and let layout API. What? And technically, we could have a fourth one, which is CSS Grids. That's coming next year, actually. So it's not available now, so we don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on Flexbox. Tell me, Thomas, why exactly shouldn't we be using tables? Well, I think of tables as, um, and I've used the term to several people, but as bird poop all over your code. It, it just clutters everything. It just makes a whole bunch of, adds a whole bunch of complexity to your HTML. So it's verbose. The nesting gets really complicated, especially when you want to resize things. And I consider tables to be a maintenance nightmare. And I think everyone, once you get used to Flexbox, will absolutely agree with these three bullet points. I just thought to ask everyone uh, if anyone uses tables to lay out, but I think no one raises hands after your <laughs> comment. Uh, then uh, we can use Flexbox CSS, which I personally uh, used a lot before. So we, uh, it's very powerful. We have those justify content, and uh, we define the flags uh, properties. The problem here, 
is, or like maybe several problems, that we have to manually go and write and define CSS and require some in-depth knowledge about uh, how the Flex internally works. And as of me, I never remember the was the difference between justify content and uh, align items, or like I remember it in theory, but like anyway, I open the Dev Console and just try to hack it until it works and looks how I want it to. Uh, so, yes, uh, often people just open the spec and try to accomplish what they want. Uh, then it requires a lot of experience with browser bugs. We have this uh, uh, bad child uh, Internet Explorer, which yes. sometimes has problems with rendering uh, vertically, like column uh, aligned uh, flex elements. Uh, some prefixing is uh, necessary. That's probably not quite as current anymore, right? I think you mentioned that earlier, that with the evergreen browsers, maybe the prefixing isn't quite as important. Okay, maybe we can. But with the problem child yeah. browsers, you still have some of yeah. those issues. Uh, and then it's not Angular native. So if we are working with Angular applications, maybe we have something better. Mm -hmm. Which options do we have? Um, so this one here is the typical approach you might have taken using Angular 1.x, the material version. And it was embedded in the material. So we have layout equals row and flex and flex. And what this would do was a little sleight of hand. It was a directive that would run, but it would calculate based on the expression you're using uh, an equivalent class name and then apply the class name. And so that means that we had to generate all the CSS for those expected class names. And that also meant that we had a large footprint of CSS that would have to be downloaded. So this is what we meant by generational one was it worked, but it wasn't really what we wanted. Uh, yeah. Right. And oh, I got so it was quite a few, uh, quite a big amount of CSS. And uh, I experienced myself the specificity issue with that it gave so uh, detailed selector names mm -hmm. to the classes. So it was really impossible to override that if you suddenly mm -hmm. needed that. And it was slightly fragile. It was fragile, right? If you had an expression that really wasn't, didn't map to an equivalent CSS class name, then what would you do? Mm -hmm. And that's what I meant by being fragile. And the CSS specificity is, if, if you find yourself using bang important to try to do overrides, well, then that's also a dangerous sign that maybe there's a better way to do it. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, and it, it was just possible in terms of sizing to uh, jump before like 5 and 10%, uh, 15 20 correct. and so on. So you right. couldn't use anything like 12 or correct. 17. Right. So some limitation there, too. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And so then we come to generation two, or if, if we're matching with Angular 5, uh, generation five, right? And this is the Flex Layout library available with Angular. So do you want to talk to this? I, I can comment on it. I love it. I love this library. Thank you so much for the time you dedicated to that. Uh, it's a standalone library, which is fantastic, uh, because you don't uh, need to use Angular material if you don't uh, need to, uh, or you can combine them. They work pretty fine together. In fact, Angular material doesn't use this library. They handcrafted the Flexbox with CSS directly, and there were specific valid reasons for doing that, but what it also means is you can use them in combination. You can use material with Angular Flex layout. Mm. And uh, then what's important to know that uh, Angular Flex layout is a TypeScript implementation. It's not a CSS style sheet in itself, uh, which dynamically injects the CSS on runtime. Uh, so it's this CSS is in line. They, it gives us two sets of fantastic APIs. It's a static API, which we right. start with. Right. <laughs> and, Point to it. <laughs> and responsive <laughs> API, which is even more awesome. Uh, and of course, it is integrated with Angular CLI. So all our tools in our favor. You can always go and check the documentation, which is pretty straightforward uh, on the GitHub. We should probably have included the link too, but mm -hmm. it's quite easy to uh, find it. Browser support is nice. Uh, now, now don't worry, we're getting ready to show you some of the API and some of the demos. We're yeah. just setting the stage. And then I have a slide. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, how do you install? It's like uh, not rock insights either. NPM install uh, Angular Flex layout. A surprise, right? Mm -hmm. uh, currently, which version is it? Beta T, right? It's beta, beta 10. 10. Soon, soon we have a little fixes that we need to make, but beta 10. 
then we should not to forget to import it in our ng module, pretty much as everything else that we import in our ng applications. Uh, and, uh, and the interesting we are thing about go? this Sorry? is that the interesting thing about this one is this is, in general, this is the only place you have to put define anything in your code. Everything else is in your HTML layer. Mm. So all the power that we're talking about with this API, in general, is in the HTML layer. That's why I think it's so elegant. Yeah. Right? So we do that, and we're all set, or like we have to start using the API. Mm. Uh, and we'll start uh, to talk with the static API, which is a declarative uh, API or with the directives that we can use in HTML, which supports all the fancy th things like data binding. Uh, it, uh, as I said previously, injects in line the CSS for what we need. It supports change detection, too. Uh, we have the features like FX hide and FX show, which means w which uh, operates where elements should be hidden and shown. And it's quite performant, or at least what right. you have so promised us. Do you mind if I add a little bit on this? No, sure. So what we mean by injected in line is it actually adds, if you had a div and you said style equals, those styles are inline styles for that element. So when we inject in line, we actually add the styles right into the style attribute we inject it right in there, which means it has the highest specificity. It's going to override anything else. Now, one may argue pros and cons, but we have found to date it works very well. Mm, I think it uh, improves performance, right? And uh, I think it's even overrides the shadow DOM properties. I think it has the highest specificity. It, it will definitely override those mm. for that element. Uh, so which APIs do we have available? We have uh, layout, or FX layout, uh, which defines the direct flex direction. We have layout wrap, whether elements should wrap or not. We have layout gap, a powerful feature which tells which, uh, uh, which uh, how do you say it? The, Distance the, the should, uh, yeah, it should be between elements. Mm -hmm, the spacing. Spacing, mm -hmm. that's what the word I was missing. And then we have layout align. So we say how elements should be aligned. Don't worry, we are going to show it pretty soon. So uh, a couple of examples how element will look like if we align them with row and column. Uh, FX layout has some uh, options, like it can be row, row reverse. So we can align elements as well right to left. So it's like a bi-directional logic here. Uh, then we have uh, some other APIs for container children, because uh, previous APIs were f for the containers, and th this is for the children. So we can specify the flex, we define size and how elements should flex. Uh, we can say something about the order, how, when elements should appear in the layout. Then we have offset, if we want to give some elements some specific offset, for example, from the start, start of the container. And we have a line and flex fill. So for example, if we use flex fill, then the element should uh, fill the uh, all available space. What is important, uh, what at least was important for me as a dev to know what uh, the different uh, versions and shorthands stand for. So here, the first value that we can give to FX flex is uh, flex grow, then the shrink and basis. Mm -hmm. And you just give one value, then it will be the basis. So grow is a value that defines how the, it's not a size, it's how the element should grow proportionally to the other elements if there is any available space. Shrink is the opposite, it's how element should shrink if we have some space uh, relatively to the siblings. And then we have basis, so what we want it to be by default. So uh, here uh, is an example how element will uh, grow. Uh, the second element is given flex grow set to five. So if they don't have space, they will be equally big. Otherwise, uh, it starts to grow. Can you go we back to that slide? Sorry? Would you mind going back to that slide just for a moment? Whoop, sure. So the interesting thing here is notice we're not doing any CSS, right? We're, we're not having applied class names or anything, and yet it's, it's responsibly adapting the sizes to the parent container. And it's all declarative right in the HTML. Yeah, so you can give it some uh, d different options. You can even use calculations there, or pixels, or give some uh, known aliases like auto, non, initial, no shrink, what you typically would have been using in 
uh, CSS, but you don't have to. So the, the, the real power of the library is that you don't have to think that much about the details, about what's going on under the hood right. in the CSS. And then I will try to show you a demo. Uh, so you can find it uh, on the wiki, right? Uh, the link to the, the demos. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, here we have some, uh, uh, we can play. Uh, with the elements here. So here we can see uh, what is the markup, and we can alter it. So now we uh, change the direction from row to column, and then we can align elements differently, like the center, or even space between, or space around, and it's probably more visible if I use direction row. Uh, yeah, so this is space between, this is space around. And then we can uh, align them uh, uh, across the uh, another axis. So this is N, this is center. You can just go and play uh, and find all the examples there. Uh, here, you, this element uses layout fill uh, to fill all the available space. Um, here's example what happens if you don't define the flex value here. So if you just use FX flex, it just fills all the available space to you. Here you see that uh, what happens uh, if the element doesn't fit here. It's the example with layout wrap. So it will be just a little gap here. And Katarina, do you, if you scroll back up a bit, you can click on one of those and you'll see it change the flow direction. On what? If you scroll up just a tiny bit more, that one. That one? Click on yeah. that one. Ooh, cool. What does it change? It just shows you the. Oh, yeah, the, FX the, layout, row and column. Correct. Mm -hmm. You probably, we can do this a bit bigger. I agree. Later in the <laughs> demo. Yeah, so you can uh, define some offset uh, to tell Animan not to like start from the beginning, but have some offset before them. And align self is quite powerful too. So we can use it on, for example, this element to uh, get flex align stretch or auto or start or center. Uh, I don't think we are, have time to dive into the code, right? It, what is it time to? Oh, what's wrong? There we go. Yes. So right. now it's the time for the quiz. Uh, if you can go to kahoot.it on your uh, this side. I will hold this up. Uh, it will come what is up the, soon. Sorry. There we go. So the pin is 4015699. And there's a timer on these, so we don't give you a lot of time, do we? Oh, look at that. Shall we start? We're sort of. We can wait on. maybe until a bit more people join. We have 50, 72. Okay. All right, let's, we're sort of running out of time. That's why I'm worried. Yeah. We can wait like in maybe. You're so patient. Five seconds? Sure. Four, three, two, one. Should we start? Mm. We can do that. OK, is everyone ready? First question is, what is Angular Flex layout? Is it CSS specification, CSS and JavaScript library for Angular material, Angular directive, or TypeScript layout engine for Angular? OK. And who's the winner? Right, it's a TypeScript layout engine for, for Angular. L-O. So Christian is not allowed to play. <laughs> <laughs> Which directive is used to specify flex flow direction? You could have had music on. Did I turn it off? 
shall we see? We can try? No. It's on. Maybe it's just not coming through. Okay. Maybe it's HDMI. I don't remember how player how many players we have. One sixty six. Let's go for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. FX layout. And we have a new leader who is K. Which directive maximizes the width and height of the element in the layout container or in its parent container? This one's the hard one. I think. Okay. Five seconds to go. <laughs> uh -huh. Great. Yes, very good. Most of you knew the answer. And we have a new leader, Chris. And what is the, does the default notation FX flex equal 25? What does that do? Is it 25 pixels? Or maybe 25%? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or viewport width? This is probably a trick question, too, because I don't know if we covered that very <laughs> clearly. OK, most of you guessed it. Right. And who and won? And then Chris we have won. a Chris. All right, so when we're done, if Chris will come up and, and find us, we have a hoodie for you. So congratulations. Or maybe Chris right. can just come. Do you, want, do you want him to come up? I don't know if we have OK. There we go. So we've talked about the static API. And we use the term responsive UX, but it's really an overloaded term because when I think of responsive, I think of the elements changing their sizes and maybe their positions with respect to the parent and the browser window changing sizes. That's already built into the static API. So when we talk about responsive here, we're really talking about allowing your applications to adapt which elements are shown, which elements are visible, whether they're sizing, based on the device you're showing it on. So that's what we mean in this case by responsive or adaptive UIs. Right, so we want to change uh, the containers and the elements based on the window sizes and especially on the device size. And we want our user experience to adapt to these devices. So here's an example where we have a desktop layout, but on the mobile layout we want it to adapt where the article is now, now everything flows vertically but we actually have a change in the order. The nav and the aside are down below. So you don't, you don't just make an adaptive UI, right? You're going to need Flexbox CSS, and you're going to need media queries. And I love the minions. So that's, that's why I put this in here. I feel like this guy sometimes. But if you're going to use Flexbox CSS and media queries, then you might normally do this by hand, where you're using a media query and you're defining things. And this gets back to the issue of handcrafting Flexbox CSS. And if you're going to do that, my reaction is, oh my god, please tell me there's a different way than doing it by hand. And there is. So you can use the responsive API within the Flex Layout Library to ad help adapt your applications. It still uses Flexbox under the hood. It still uses all the lessons you've learned with the static API. And it's still in the HTML layer. In fact, what we did was we added a very intuitive API extension for the responsive features, and you still don't have to really know the details about media queries. Ekaterina, if I'm missing something, just jump in here, all right? So we, we built the responsive API off of the material design specification, where they sort of identified breakpoints and where they used media queries to define these pixel ranges that, at whose edges are the breakpoints. So here's an example that came right out of the specification documents, where we might say that the, this range extra small is all the way up to anything less than 600 pixels, and small is anything less than 960 pixels horizontally. 
of course, and then you have large and extra large. So if we take these ideas of these sort of names associated with the ranges, perhaps we could reduce those to aliases, extra small, small, medium, and associate these aliases with specific ranges, media query ranges. Mm -hmm. That seems and pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But uh, if I, for example, want to address like a mobile phone that uh, is maybe under 599 and maybe a bit over, what should I use? Right. Should so I use two media queries or? Right. So how would you address it if this range match doesn't match exactly yeah. what you need? And we've accounted, but sometimes you'll have logic you might need where these don't fit the exact sets you want. So maybe you could then have another set where you say if it's less than small, if it's that would be then equivalent of extra small. If it's less than large, that's the equivalent of, me of medium, small, and extra small. So we have these less than ideas. And then we can also have greater than. So we have all these aliases that give you a set of combinations that you can use. And a quick question here, is extra small exactly the same thing as less than small? In this case, it is. However, less than medium is actually small and extra small. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, right? So this is how you can sort of juggle which approach you're comfortable with on defining your, your adaptive experiences. So now that we have these aliases defined, we can actually combine that with a specific API that's, that's published with the Angular Flex layout. And we just simply add it as a suffix. Then you can say fxlayout.small. So if it's normally in a row, you can say on mobile or dot, dot .sm should be in column. So same notation, just with these suffixes. And we call this a very declarative API because it's still in the HTML, right? There's declarative um, functional programming, but this is declarative markup. So to build this particular layout that would also be adapted for, for mobile, let's start with the HTML. Here's our HTML with a header. Then we have a content area with a nav, the article, and the aside. Nothing that defines a fluid and responsive resizing in. So let's add those. We will then add the Flex Layout API here for column and row and different sizings that we want to do. And then we can then say, now that we have that for desktop, how do we deal with it for mobile? We can come back to our HTML markup, and now we can add extra ones with the suffix. So by default, it's in row, but for extra small layouts, it would be in column. Similar with order, we can change ordering around. And therefore, this whole combined API then allows our application to adapt from desktop to mobile devices in a very intuitive fashion. It's very easy to maintain. And again, we haven't written any CSS. You haven't so written far? any CSS. That's really the goal here. Right? This doesn't solve every single problem in the world, but it's, it, it does a really decent job. And if I'm going fast, I apologize, because we, we have to manage time here. And so this API, it's intended to be intuitive. It's declarative. No fussing with media queries unless you want custom ranges. No fussing with breakpoints unless you want custom breakpoints. No programmatic work at all other than the module. I'd like to say this is magic, right? I really do think of this as being magical. And this is probably one of the most overused GIFs, GIFIs ever, right? I, but I just love it. So in this case, do we have time for a demo? I don't know if we do. Actually, not. Should I do, do something quick, or? Do one, very quick. Do one, OK, I'll do one. So if we come back here. We can come to, let's go all the way back up. This is all available on the, from the wiki. This is, these are demos built from the source, so it's, all, it's part of the repository. And you can come to the responsive one here, and let's just, I'm going to shrink the window down here. Notice what happens to this first one here when I shrink the window down. It will be, go into layout, a vertical mode. Just happens automatically. If I do this one here, I can do this here, but watch what happens on this one. It actually was hiding the first column. This one here, it will change the order 
of things around. This one will hide in show elements. But the really cool thing that I like is we added extra APIs to well-known directives from the core. So we added responsive features to core where for ng class and ng style, you can do things. So the styles themselves can adapt to different UI. Oh, that's fancy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I could show more, but I want to sort of keep us on track. So tell me to slow down if I should, all right? So a little bit more about this declarative API. We also have FX show and hide. Ekaterina, do you want to talk about that just briefly? Uh, it's fine, I can do that. So uh, we can specify where elements want to, uh, will be hidden or shown, and uh, then we can extend it with all, uh, those uh, responsive uh, suffixes. So we say that this element uh, on extra small screens uh, should be uh, shown, right? It should be hidden on extra small. Oh, it should be shown. You're absolutely right. That's because mm -hmm. the height is set to yes, false, sir, so right. that means that it's uh, true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the big screens, fx height will be set to true, so it will be hidden. So we can combine and define what can be shown when. Correct. Probably we don't have to time to go to that much details. So yeah, here we have the explanation how this logic works. Correct. This is, th these slides will all be available after this talk, and they'll be online, so you could go through them at your leisure. And then we have a visit. So that was a, a, a visibility one. This is more related to FX Flex, right? So this is sizing related, so the title's probably The title not, is right? wrong. I, I can't believe I never noticed that. So we have these types of responsive extra features. We have FX Show, FX Hide, NG Class, and NG Style. That's uh, awesome. Too. And we have one other one that we just added for image. For image okay, storage. why it's not in the docs then? I tried to find it. Did you look for that? <laughs> yes, I looked for that. Yeah, so you could slap my hand. It's, it's not yet in the docs, but it's definitely part of beta 10. And it's a way that you can say that on a, on a desktop device, maybe you have a high resolution image. But on a mobile device, maybe it's a lower resolution image. And you literally can change the URL based using this uh, 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 responsive API. That's great. So, finally, we have the, the um, imperative API. There's not a lot to it, but if you really needed to do something in your code, if you wanted to adjust your business logic based on this API, we, we have an observable media. You can define breakpoints. You could define your own custom, um, uh, let's call it uh, API extensions. And I won't, we don't have time to go into that now. So. But like uh, the example is this image uh, directive, right? That's correct. Uh, that, that actually uses this base FX directive adapter. Um, and we have some documentation on that. We'll get better on that uh, as the future progresses. And then finally, let's say that programmatically you wanted to listen for an activation of a particular range. So in this case, we're saying when the range of on, that we're on a mobile device activates, then I want to load mobile-specific content. So this is what we meant, how you can adjust your business logic based on listening to the media query engine. Notice you didn't have to do anything else other than inject the service. So we probably have just enough time to play the last quiz very quickly. And go to kahoot.it. Where is it? Is that the one? The other one? It's probably that one. There you go. Yes. I'm going to step out of your way. And game pin is 836-9639. And we'll just start in 10 seconds. A lot's not allowed to play either. <laughs> so anyone who's part of the Angular Material team is not allowed to play. Probably they already have would, some fancy hoodies, too. Oh, absolutely. That's like cheating. OK. Three, two, one. And there we go. So just four questions. OK, here we'll see an example. Which class name will be used when large breakpoint is active? If you consider this markup, ng class greater than small class one and class class two. Class one, class two, both 
or none of them. Okay, great. Who's the leader? Have a look. Will the div uh, be hidden or visible when the light breakpoint is active? We have FX show, we have FX hide excess set to false, and then we have FX hide LG set to true. Visible or hidden? So as you change your window size, remember when we talk about active, if you go from one range to another, then the, the new range that becomes active is what we mean by it's an activated breakpoint. Three, two, one, there we go. All right. Most of you got it right. People were listening. Alex Hobbs. Which Alice's match the following media query? Max width 599 pixels. Is it extra small, less than small, or small? These are such hard questions. You're a tough teacher. This one I probably wouldn't have gotten right. It's you who are the best teacher in the world here, not <laughs> me. OK, five, four, three, two, one, and here we go. OK, both were correct, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then, the last question. Is angle material necessary to work with angle flex layout? Yep or no? Lots of answers on that one. <laughs> Who do you think is winning, Alex or Yellboy? Woo! All right. Let's see the results. We have Alex, Alex Hobbs. All right. <laughs> Here you have some links mm -hmm. about uh, what we were talking about, and maybe. Uh, two of the winners can just come up to the stage to get their prices. Yes. And we will be available in the office hours I think so, and yes. on the panel mm -hmm. if you have some questions. Thank and you so much. And the slides will be up. Thank you.